Hi there, welcome back to the Calculus of Variations video number 16. In this video we're going to do a derivation of the Jacobi accessory equation. Now this is um, equivalent to the Euler-Lagrange equation but in for the second variation. Now I will first start off by looking right writing down what we did in the previous video which was the second variation. So the second variation would look like this. If we call it I2 would be the integral of epsilon upon 2 factorial from A to B of partial squared F upon partial y squared times theta squared plus partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared times theta derivative squared plus 2 theta theta derivative partial squared f upon partial y partial y derivative all by dx okay so that's the second variation now we want to rewrite that and work out set it to zero and work out what the uh, what the equivalent the equivalent form for the second variation is going to be okay so let's just get started right. I, I can rewrite that there as epsilon squared upon 2 factorial okay now what we'll do is we'll write it in terms of a much simpler a to B version okay so for partial squared f of partial y squared we'll call that f not not okay I should write that down here um, let's see partial squared f by partial y squared we'll call that f not not so that's f not not times theta squared plus now for partial f squared by partial y derivative squared okay we'll call that f 1 1 so that second term can be written as f 1 1 theta derivative squared plus and if we call the the other derivative partial squared f partial y partial y derivative and we'll call that f 0 1 the mixed derivative okay so that can be written as 2 eta eta derivative of f 0 1 by dx okay that's I2 equals that there. Now, a little trick, first little trick that we'll, we'll do is I'll we'll rewrite this section about again. A to B, epsilon squared when 2 factorial. F not not eta squared remains the same. Now, I'll keep that the same as well. F11 one, one, eta derivative squared. Now, this little section here, 2 eta times eta derivative, that's the same as writing d by dx of eta squared. Okay. That there is the same as that. And I'll just do it down below then. I'll rub it out. Okay, so we know if, if we multiply this back out, we've got an implicit uh, differentiation. So we're going to multiply going to differentiate it 
So it would be it would be two eta times the eta by the x, which would equal two eta eta derivative, which is what we've got up there. Okay. Now, uh, if you're unsure, just check back on implicit um, differentiation. You'll see that that's the case. Okay. Um, and that is times f01 by dx. Now, if we now write that by the integral from a to b of epsilon squared upon 2 factorial, we'll keep that again f not not eta squared. Okay, now if we take this term here and we integrate by parts. Now you can see the reason why we want to integrate by parts because we want to make f01 the subject of the differential and we want eta squared to come out of the differential. Now I'm not going to write the whole, whole lot of the integration by parts because as I mentioned in the last video what we can do is we could simply look at that and we can say we'll make the positive a negative so it's just the three steps that I mentioned the last time the positive becomes a negative okay the n squared comes eta squared sorry comes out of the derivative and the f01 goes into the derivative so that becomes d by dx of f 0 1 Okay, now, and I'll just continue and I'll just write this down. I'll just do one thing at a time so that it doesn't get any, doesn't get a confusion. F11 one, one, eta derivative squared by dx. Okay, now we can rewrite that. I integral a to b epsilon squared upon 2 factorial. This f not not remains the same. But what we'll do is we'll take out the common factor of eta squared. We'll write f not not minus d by dx of f not one. Okay. Now this f one one eta, so if we were to look at that, so that's equivalent, that's saying f11 eta derived of squared, now I know from integration by parts, that that would be written, now we're in, in effect we're doing integration by parts, but we're doing it backwards, so that would be equivalent to minus eta d by dx of eta derivative f11. One, one. Now what you can do is just multiply that out that is all by dx. Now if you were able if you were to do integration by parts on this here so eta would be one of your factors and d by dx eta derived of f11 would be the, the other factor okay so if you were to do integration by parts on that you would so you can see get this all right so we're around the right way so we would take the eta derived of f11 would come out of the differential, okay, so that would be, you would have eta 1, eta derived of f11 would come out of the differential, and the eta value would go into the differential, okay, and the sign would change, okay, so if you just work through that, you really convince yourself that that term there is in effect 
the same as that term there okay so you're just working through an integration by parts and you will get that that term there okay um, I'll just read through it once more just to convince myself we're going to have eta derivative f11 would become outside okay so I've eta f of 1 1 and then we would have d eta by dx which would be the eta derivative okay so then the eta derivative would multiply with eta derivative and you would have eta derivative squared yeah that's correct okay so again work through that yourself doing partial differentiation you'll see that that is in fact equivalent to that okay um, now we're almost there now this is I was working through this last night and I couldn't get an answer the correct answer because I was missing out this little section a to b now that's epsilon squared on 2 factorial now you if you can remember from the previous video that I did when we did the Euler Lagrange we're going through the same process we did with the Euler Lagrange but what we'll do is we'll take out a common factor which is eta x so one of these eta x's will come out okay and if one of eta x's come out then you'll end up with an eta times f not naught minus d by dx of f01 okay and this one here would be minus the eta would come out so it would just be d by dx of f11 eta derivative okay again it's eta x is multiplied all of that okay by dx and we're now in the position we're in with the Euler Lagrange okay we'll take the sin squared upon 2 factorial integral from a to b now we were in the same position where we used the fundamental lemma of calculus of variations and we're able to say well that there is our variational quantity we know that isn't equal to zero so in order to make the whole this whole thing here equal to zero this section here must be zero okay so we're going to make the whole lot of that equal to zero in order to make the whole lot of that equal to zero if I just maybe just get rid of that then now because that's we don't need it for this section okay in order to make this whole thing equal to zero we've got to make this here equal to zero so we'll rewrite this out here so that would be equivalent to f not not minus d by dx of f not one all times of eta minus d by dx of f one one eta derivative that there would have to equal zero and that there is in effect we could call it the Euler Lagrange but for the second variation and it's called the uh, sometimes called the, the Jacobi accessory equation now we're in a position where we've got from the roadmap video video 14 we've got the two things we were looking for 
we were looking for f double derivative okay equation one and we've now derived this equation here which is the Jacobi accessory equation that's number two okay so we've got these now the next video what we'll do is we'll use this number equation number two this thing here in order to simplify the second variational which we've written up here okay so we could actually if I just pick that there that would be our equation number one okay so we're going to use that equation there I'll just call it one we're going to use that and that okay so that will simplify that equation now the reason for doing that is that in the end we'll end up with a value for i2 which is dependent only on one of these terms okay instead of on all of them but that's for the next video okay thank you for listening and goodbye